All right, so the last time we dove into this, we covered a lot. We covered the incredible lost music hidden inside the McDonald's ECDP ROM. We covered the etymology of Donald McDonald. We even covered the existence of a second McDonald's training game known only as eSmart. But to be honest with you, what you saw last time was, if you'll forgive the expression, truly just the tip of the iceberg. Because that last video only covered the first three layers of the McDonald's training game iceberg, and buddy, there is a lot more to go. Now with that said, I do have a promise for you. I promise that once you reach the end of this video, you will understand every single piece of text on this iceberg. All of this will mean something to you. It will all make sense to you. You could explain it to someone if you had to. You'll get it after this, all right? So in the interest of time, let's dive right into layer four of the McDonald's training game iceberg, beginning with now for those unfamiliar with the term a TAS or tool assisted speedrun describes a category of speedrun where an emulator is used to record inputs to create as perfect a run as possible usually far beyond what a human being could ever hope to actually accomplish most commonly you'll see TASs for popular games like the Super Mario Bros series but hilariously, just one week after the McDonald's ECDP ROM was publicly released, a YouTube user named Norris Tasses uploaded the world's first tool-assisted speedrun of the McDonald's training game, running the entire thing in just 13 minutes and 11 seconds. Now this time, 13 minutes and 11.22 seconds is impressive. To this day, it's still far beyond anything that a human being has ever accomplished in this game, myself included. But earlier this month, a new speedrun appeared, a brand new task from a user named Wipeout Jack, who managed to shave a whopping 1 minute and 16 seconds off Nora's time. And the best part is, Jack is not done. To this day, you can find Wipeout Jack in the ECDP Discord's task channel, continuing to shave frame after frame off of his near perfect time. Midi and Kanai. One of the most interesting things about the cartridge I received from Yahoo Auction Japan was that it still had data on it when I received it. When I first got the McDonald's game and registered myself as a crew member, there were already two employees registered. Ooh, wow. Oh my lord. What were their, is, are these people's smile. names? Those employees were named Miri and Kanai. And by logging into the game in manager mode, we can actually learn a little bit more about these two people. Miri, as it turns out, was 22 years old at her time of employ at this particular McDonald's Japan location, and Kanai was 26. Now, assuming they played the game in 2010 when this promotion first started, that would put them roughly in the ballpark of ages 32 and 36 today. Now, there's a lot we don't know about Miri and Kanai. Which McDonald's did they work at? Why did they both have zero completions in the game cart? Did they even exist at all or were they put there by a collector who got their hands on this rare cartridge before I did? It's tough to say. Maybe someday we'll succeed in finding the real Miri and the real Kanai, but for now this mystery remains wide open. The 2DSi Theory one of the outstanding mysteries that remains from my original video is the fact that my auction showed up with not one, but two McDonald's branded DSi units. At the time, I was extremely confused. I was not expecting this shipment to come with two separate consoles, but in the time since that video, it seems we've actually figured out why that was the case. According to an article published by Japanese business newspaper Nikkei back in 2010, the plan with the McDonald's game was to send out, quote, about two DSs and the dedicated training software, eSmart, to every single store. It seems then that the shipment I received accounted for one store's entire supply. But which store was it? Trust me, we will get to that later. Silva Gunner Collusion. Now one of the funniest things to happen over this whole arc is this. The very same day, the very same night that I dumped the McDonald's ECDP ROM, the infamous video game music shitpost channel Silva Gunner released two high quality rips from the McDonald's ECDP game. Listen to this one. Yep, you heard that right. That was the Flintstones theme into Snow Halation. Two iconic Silva Gunner tracks merged with McDonald's ECDP. But what's most baffling about this is how quickly it happened. These videos weren't just uploaded the same night I released the ROM, they were released roughly one hour after I posted my video. And it actually gets crazier than that. See, my video was a premiere, and it was a whopping 49 minutes long. And I didn't upload the ROM until the minute the video was over. All this means that, as best I can tell, the total time that elapsed between me releasing the ROM and the Silver Gunner video being uploaded was, at most, 
23 minutes. Incredible. Now, understandably, this 23 minute turnaround time has led a lot of people to wonder, was all of this planned in advance? Was I somehow in cahoots with the people behind Silva Gunner? The answer, believe it or not, is no. The brilliant minds behind Silva Gunner accomplished this entire thing from ideation to ripping the sound font to composing the remix to publishing it on their channel in under half an hour. And bravo. Esmart 2.0. So last time we confirmed the existence of a second McDonald's game called eSmart, which was designed to help veteran McDonald's employees brush up on their knowledge. But what if I told you there was another missing McDonald's game? It turns out that ECDP and eSmart were not the only two training games McDonald's manufactured as part of this promotion. There was also this, a game called eSmart 2.0, which appears to be a follow-up to the original software. This game, presented in this sort of unceremonious white box that, let's be real, pales in comparison to the original eSmart case, remains a pretty big question mark, honestly. There is a ton we don't know about this thing. First and foremost, what the actual differences between eSmart 1 and eSmart 2 even are. Weirder still is the fact that we haven't even come across one single image of the eSmart 1.0, or eSmart, cartridge, which has led some people to wonder whether such a thing even existed at all. All we know is this. If eSmart and eSmart 2.0 really were two separate pieces of software in two separate cartridges, that means we can officially up the count of lost McDonald's training games from two to three. Big Mac IRL percent. Big Mac IRL% percent refers to a video uploaded by ECDP community member I'm Purple in which somebody appears to attempt the world's first McDonald's ECDP speedrun in real life. Just watch. Now, at the risk of totally demystifying this video for you, the source footage actually comes from a pre-existing Gizmodo video about how Big Macs are made. However, if anybody watching this video right now happens to work at a McDonald's and could somehow find a way to attempt the IRL% percent speedrun for real without jeopardizing their job, I should say, well, all I can say is that I think I speak for all of us when I say I'd love to see that. Fry's Dispenser Strat one of the greatest triumphs to occur in the world of ECDP speedrunning so far actually came about totally by accident. See, back on November 19th, a Spanish speedrunner by the name of Haku EXE was streaming himself playing the McDonald's ECDP game on Twitch, and he inadvertently stumbled across something major. Haku was exploring the game, going through the settings, and just clicking on random things, and he wound up activating a setting that turned the french fry speedrunning scene completely on its head. See, while poking around in those menus, Haku had unknowingly turned on a feature in the store layout called the french fry dispenser. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's basically an enormous machine only found in select McDonald's locations that can automatically dispense frozen french fries directly into the basket, saving a ton of time for McDonald's crew members. And just like for those real world employees, it turns out that the fry dispenser also saves a significant amount of time for anybody speedrunning fries training. So much time, in fact, that after discovering this strat, Haku briefly held the French fry training world record. Ah, world record! World record! And while inevitably the proliferation of Haku's forbidden knowledge about the French fry dispenser strat, among other speedrunners, led to his score being toppled almost immediately, Haku's contribution of this strat is still a historic moment in the world of McDonald's ECDP speedrunning, and it's one that I think is worth celebrating. No A on the cartridge. There's very little we actually know about the creation of the McDonald's eCrew development program, and among those vagaries is the exact degree of Nintendo's actual involvement in the game's development. Sources vary wildly on this. Some claim that the eCrew development program was developed in direct partnership with Nintendo, and on the other hand, we've dug up things like this quote from the 2010 McDonald's Japan shareholders meeting, where a shareholder asks about eSmart and the director of McDonald's at the time simply describes the development as, quote, outsourced. With all that conflicting info, one of the best clues we have to go on actually comes from the text printed on the cartridge itself. Now, believe it or not, these serial number codes on the outside of cartridges can tell you quite a bit about the games themselves. Here's a fun fact. First-party Nintendo games always have a cartridge code beginning with the letter A. 
Now, not all cartridges with an A on them are Nintendo-developed software. There's a few exceptions. See this high school musical game that has an A for some reason. But all Nintendo-developed software is an A cartridge. You following? It's like not all rectangles are squares, but all squares are rectangles. Does that make sense? The reason this matters is because the ECDP cartridge starts with the letter C, and the eSmart cartridge starts with a T, indicating that neither of these were first-party DS games. What this seems to imply is that whoever McDonald's outsourced the development of these games to, it was not Nintendo itself. So while we still don't know who made the McDonald's eCrew training software, we can probably cross Nintendo themselves off the list. Store number 160700. Out of all the unexpected discoveries I stumbled across in my first playthrough of the ECDP game, this remains one of my favorites. When I first registered myself as a McDonald's crew member in the game, at the part where it asked me for my store ID, the game actually auto-filled a store number, 160700, with the implication being that this is the store number of the actual store where this copy of ECDP was used to train employees. Here's the tricky part though. As best we can tell, McDonald's Japan's store ID numbers are not six digits long. And for a while this stumped us, but then a user named Ephist showed up in the Discord and found something interesting. A McDonald's located in Hokkaido, Japan, designated as store number 1607. This theory suggests that the manager of this McDonald's located in Hokkaido just typed in two extra zeros at the end of his store number when setting up his copy of the game for the first time. So this McDonald's location, the one that you're seeing photos of right now, this McDonald's, one of the northernmost McDonald's in all of Japan, could very well be the very same one that this cartridge and these two DSIs originated from. Salt.mods In my first playthrough of the ECDP game, there was one enormous thing that I missed. It turns out this cartridge is absolutely packed with video. As soon as the ROM was released out into the world, people began picking it apart, and very quickly they made a discovery. This cartridge was loaded with video files. In my initial playthrough, I had mostly ignored the SOC training guides because they're all in Japanese and I can't read Japanese, but it turns out that most of these guides actually contain at least one video tutorial showing how to perform these tasks in an actual Japanese McDonald's. Looking at the data on the cartridge as a whole, these two dozen or so videos actually account for the vast majority of the storage on the cartridge. By themselves, they take up a whopping 83% of the game's storage. And while none of these videos have any sound at all, the game would just play its music on loop while you watch them, there was one video that was the exception. See, after extracting all the video files from the cartridge, hackers were shocked to discover that one video called Salt.Mods, a two second long standalone snippet from one of the fried training videos, was bizarrely enough the only file on the cartridge containing any audio at all. Thus far, nobody can figure out why this is the case. Was this an oversight? Was it intentional? Was it a test of some kind? Either way, the audio found in Salt.Mods has extreme historical significance, especially when you consider that the corresponding video you can find in the SOC guide has no audio whatsoever. So without further ado, here's what you've all been waiting for. For the first time ever, Salt.Mods with the long lost audio included. Enjoy. Hell yeah. All right, we're about to enter one of my favorite layers, the one that contains dirty teriyaki and the McDonald's ECDP fanfiction. But before we get into that, we need to take a quick word from our sponsor, ExpressVPN. So by now you've probably heard me and everyone else on YouTube talk about just how much of Netflix's content library is region locked to countries outside the United States. So for example, I connected to Netflix Japan recently and watched all five seasons of Billions, even though that show's not available on Netflix in the US. But here's something that doesn't really get talked about as much. The inverse is also true. So here in the United States, our version of Netflix has a ton of content in its library, including shows like Portlandia and The West Wing, movies like There Will Be Blood, and these are just a small sliver of the Netflix titles that non-Americans cannot access. Luckily, there's an easy fix, ExpressVPN. See, with ExpressVPN, you can virtually teleport your computer, phone, tablet, or whatever device you're using to any of over 90 countries. So no matter where you're located, you can access tons of region-locked content, not to mention the other benefits of VPN use, such as hiding your IP, keeping your location private, and much more. To find out how you can get three months free, head to expressvpn.com slash Nick Robinson, or just click the link in the description below. Dirty Teriyaki. Anybody who's played a decent amount of this game knows that for the most part, Patty's is the same. Indeed, whether it's the 10th pound patties, the quarter pounder patties, or even sausage patties, 
all of them follow roughly the same basic preparation formula. You lift up the grill press, grab the relevant meat, lay it on the grill, wipe off your hands, and then throw it in a tray when it's done cooking. However, there is one peculiar outlier in all this. See, after handling every raw meat in this game, you are required to wipe your hands with these McDonald's branded hand wipes off to the side. But for reasons that we have yet to unearth, this appears to not be true when cooking the teriyaki patties. I'll let ECDP speedrunning legend Kobasco explain. Teriyaki patty training, <clears throat> excuse me, is the exact same as the 10 to 1 patty, except you don't wash your hands. I don't know why. I think they forgot. Maybe you're just not supposed to be sanitary for teriyaki paddings, patties. Uh, I'm not going to question it, though. <laughs> the existence of dirty teriyaki haunts the ECDP speedrunning community because we still don't know whether this is a fluke in the game design or whether there's a legitimate reason not to wash your hands when preparing teriyaki patties. If you have the answer or even a half-decent guess, please let us know in the comments because all of us are stumped. Mac Adventures so by now you've heard of ECDP, eSmart, and finally eSmart 2.0 for a grand total of three different long lost McDonald's training games. Three whole games. Unbelievable, right? Well, brace yourselves. What if I told you that there's actually a fourth lost McDonald's training DS game? And what if this one is, for reasons I'll explain shortly, the rarest game of them all? Check this out. So. Back around 2011, Nintendo collaborated with McDonald's to create a service called MacDay DS. Basically, it was a Wi-Fi access point within McDonald's where you could bring your DS to the store, connect to Wi-Fi, and download a bunch of exclusive software. Now, if that sounds familiar, it's because this service would later evolve into something called Nintendo Zone, which 3DS players might remember from their days of getting spot pass downloads and street passes. And while there was a lot of interesting stuff offered through Mac to DS, the thing we're most interested in today is a game called DS Mac Adventures. Now, this game, occasionally referred to by McDonald's as, quote, eSmart for kids, was pretty much exactly that. Imagine the basic gameplay of ECDP, but with a much more colorful, cartoony, kid-friendly aesthetic. And what's interesting about this is that while eSmart and ECDP appear to have a ton of overlap in shared content, art assets, etc., DS Mac Adventure really does appear to have been a huge undertaking. While it shares the fundamental gameplay of ECDP, it appears to share virtually no art assets with the official training game. The character designs are different, the menus are far friendlier, and it even looks like it contains some very rudimentary cell shading for the 3D portions. McDonald's was actually so excited about DS Mac Adventures that they began holding in-person events where parents were encouraged to bring their third to sixth grade children and indoctrinate, I mean train them, into proto-McDonald employees. And it's actually thanks to those events that we have some of the most terrifying photos you've ever seen of Donald McDonald. There was even live hamburger assembling with actual burger ingredients at these events, so these kids could put their new life-altering knowledge into practice. Surreal. Anyways, the tragic part of all this is that because DS Mac Adventure was a limited time piece of DS download play software, the game only lived on customers' DS's until the system was turned off or ran out of batteries. Meaning that, as far as we know, there's pretty much no path forward to getting our hands on this thing. McDonald's never distributed DS Mac Adventure on a cart, so unless something truly unexpected happens, the prospects of this game seeing the light of day look pretty grim. Never say never though, right? ecdp.cbps.xyz Oh, this is a good one. Okay, as you know, one of the most intriguing aspects of the ecdp cartridge is the fact that it was password protected. It's the reason both Cody and myself had to jump through so many hoops to get past the title screen, because both of our copies had pre-existing passwords that were put there by the McDonald's crew members who first obtained it. But one thing we didn't know until recently was the answer to this question. How did you set up a cartridge for the first time? The answer is hilariously complicated. See, apparently McDonald's was so worried about the valuable corporate knowledge hidden within ecdp falling into the wrong hands, that each new copy of the game shipped to a McDonald's store actually came with its own custom password specifically designed to only work with one specific store number, one specific store manager, and here's the best part, one specific Nintendo DSi. You're hearing that right, it was locked to the hardware. Sure enough, one of the most common issues we've encountered with people trying to play the ECDP ROM is that if they haven't properly loaded the save file I distributed, the title screen will not let them get past it. On a blank save of ECDP, Every single thing on the main menu is locked out and plays this loud beep error sound when you try to select it. Everything that is except for serial number entry, which is how this thing works. So you're probably asking yourself, 
how is this even possible? How could McDonald's have created a hardware-specific security system tailored to specific DSi units? The answer is actually kind of ingenious. They did it using the DSi's unique MAC address. And we're just gonna breeze right past the MAC pun and go on to the hard data here. Here's a basic explanation courtesy of a hacker known as Silica. And you might be asking yourself, how does Silica know this for a fact? Here's the answer. It's because Silica cracked it. Not only did they crack it, they reverse engineered this password in its entirety and created a full publicly available keygen website for it. So now by heading to ecdp.cbps.xyz and punching in your DS's actual MAC address, plus any store number and manager number you feel like making up because it really doesn't matter what you put in, the site will spit out a working, functional serial number that you can input to unlock the game. McDonald's DSi security, 10 years later, has finally been blown wide open. Cashier slash reader. There were many unexpected developments that came from the release of the ECDP ROM. There were droves of people running the game on original hardware. There was the tidal wave of appreciation for the soundtrack. There was the gold rush to set the world's first speedrun records. But out of everything, out of all this peripheral ECDP content, I think the single most unexpected thing for me personally was the fan fiction. Yes, you heard that right. On November 26, 2020, an archive of our own user named Nero Claudius published a remarkably well-written 2,000-word one-off story that takes place in the McDonald's ECDP universe. The first chapter, entitled Customer Cross Cashier, tells the tale of a lonely McDonald's employee who obsessively speedruns the ECDP ROM and then finds herself falling head over heels in love with this guy. Not just any guy, this specific PNG of a customer that shows up in the actual game. Anyways, it, it's a very unique story with a honestly really insane ending that I'm not gonna spoil here, so you can go read that for yourself if you want to, but yeah, man. McDonald's ECDP fanfiction. We are through the looking glass. ECDP on Wii U. This is an easy one. A couple weeks back, a Twitter user named Fiendrar sent me a photo of the ECDP ROM running on the Nintendo DS, running on the Wii U Virtual Console. That's it. That's the whole thing. It just, that photo made me laugh the first time I saw it. It still makes me laugh when I look at it now. So there you go. ECDP on Wii U. The Fly Potato Folders. So after the models and textures were all extracted from the McDonald's training game ROM successfully, it was discovered that some of the 3D models had slightly funny names. Among those names, nestled right between fish potion and grill product, lies the delightfully misspelled folder, Fly Potato, which just so happens to contain all of the french fry assets. Coo. Not the board game. Okay, so out of all of the really incredible detailed pixel art on this cartridge, I think my favorite detail has to be this one. So during the barely interactive drive through training minigame, you get a brief glimpse of a McDonald's Japan fountain beverage machine circa 2010. And what's surprising about this machine is that it appears to depict approximations of some of Japan's most popular real-world soft drinks, including Coca-Cola and Diet Coke. Those are the easy ones. But... Out of all of these, my favorite one is this. A strange green and teal beverage logo that doesn't seem to show any known beverage, at least not a beverage we're familiar with in the West. Now, at first blush, this tiny 9x10 pixel sprite, sprite, no pun intended. At first blush, this tiny 9x10 pixel sprite appears to just be a jumble of random colors. But that illusion fades the minute you learn about Ku. What is Ku? Well, Koo is a non-carbonated juice drink that the Coca-Cola company introduced exclusively in Japan back in 1999. Its mascot, a creature who is also named Koo, is this little blue guy with a small pointy tip at the top of his head. And if that general shape sounds familiar to you, let's go look back at the sprite. Not the sprite, the you know what I mean, the pixels. Not the sprite like the drink, anyway, the sprite. Your eyes do not deceive you. Some phenomenally talented pixel artist somehow managed to fit Ku's entire head in the space of a five by four pixel area. And if you think that's impressive, look right beneath it. Whoever this pixel artist is, they've actually managed as best they can to cram the word Ku in there, in English, using just five pixels to depict the letter Q and using literally one pixel each for the O's. Q-O-O. -O. Stunning work. Weemfy support. 
So out of every insane thing this community has achieved, this is probably the one that made me smile the biggest because it seemed the most out of reach to me. Anybody who's ever gotten past the title screen in eCDP has certainly noticed the big Wi-Fi network button that you can find in manager mode. Now, because the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection service was discontinued way back in 2014, it would make sense to assume that eCDP's online functionality, whatever it was, died alongside it, never to be seen again. Or did it? See, two years ago, a guy named Weem created something called WeemFi, a custom online server that aimed to replicate the Nintendo Wi-Fi connections functionality across hundreds of different DS and Wii titles. Which is cool enough on its own, but even cooler is this. In the November 28th, 2020 patch notes for WeemFi, its creators quietly added support for, you guessed it, McDonald's eCDP. How is this possible? Well, thanks to an aspiring young Nintendo historian named Larson V, who did some technical wizardry that I frankly still don't totally understand, the eCDP game now has online support again, full functionality, for the first time since Nintendo spun down the servers in 2014. And what, you may ask, does that online support consist of? Well, primarily it's just one thing, but that one thing is a shared online leaderboard of every single eCDP player who was ever connected to the Wi-Fi service. When I last checked, the person at the top of those leaderboards was a mysterious player by the name of Gyro Jim. And whoever you are, Gyro Jim, we salute your valiant efforts. Ran Ran Ru cameo. Perhaps over the years you've heard about the Japanese video sharing website Nico Nico, which for a long time was sort of Japan's equivalent to YouTube. One of the most popular videos ever uploaded on Nico Nico, with over 21 million views, is colloquially referred to as Ran Ran Ru, a powerful, mystical video in which a Japanese McDonald's commercial is precisely edited and cut down to the melody of the Toho song, UN Owen Was Heard. You've probably encountered this video at some point. It's basically internet royalty. And so powerful is this video that it's actually spawned an entire culture of edits all its own. Shout out to my boy Hamburg Gaga, by the way, check him out. But here's where the ECDP connection comes in. Remember the one ECDP quiz question where Donald McDonald shows up? It turns out the Donald McDonald depicted in that question is the exact same Japanese Donald McDonald, the same actor who starred in the infamous Ran Ran Ru commercials. Just for comparison, here's a higher resolution version of the photo that they used in the game. Wonderful. All right, crack your knuckles, guys. It is the final layer. This is it. All right, this is the final layer of the iceberg, and I think we've saved the best for last here. The December Dump. As you know, the entire journey of securing this eCDP cartridge was a series of close calls. From struggling to get the game out of Japan at all, to Cody narrowly edging me out and getting the first footage on YouTube. But as crazy as it was to learn about me and Cody's accidental parallel journeys, the craziest thing I've learned is that the two of us weren't alone. On November 17th, 2020, the night I published the video and dumped the ROM, I reached out to Nintendo historian blog Forest of Illusion to let them know that the game was now out there. Their response? Wow, you beat me to the punch, smiley face. So I responded, haha, were you hunting for it too? And the reply, yep, I actually found a person with a copy who would dump it in December. You read that right. Not only did Cody scoop me by a matter of days on getting the first footage on YouTube, I was apparently just weeks away from another mysterious individual dumping and preserving the eCDP game before I could. In other words, it wasn't just me and Cody competing to document this game. There were three of us, at least three of us, all fighting without each other's knowledge to document this game, and none of us knew how close we all were to completing it. And that's kind of poetic, right? Sound test menu. Of all the stuff the eCDP community stumbled across while sifting through the eCDP ROM, perhaps the most exciting was the following two things. Two honest-to-god pieces of significant cut content. The first of these two, according to eCDP translator Cobb Friends, is this. There are strings in the eCDP game files that imply the existence of a full-fledged sound test menu. Now, thus far, nobody has successfully been able to hack or cheat their way into finding the screen and getting it to appear in-game, but the text strings are pretty unambiguous. They have phrases like sound test, BGM number, play, pause, and more, and they seem to make it pretty clear that this game contains a sound test mode, or at least it used to at one point. Cut Map Editor The second, and frankly far more exciting piece of cut content, is the Map Editor. 
There's a whole heap of text in the game's code that refers to this. For example, phrases indicating that you can save and load machine placements, move and rotate machines within the store, and even reset the placements to default. Seemingly, this feature would have allowed crew members to reconstruct the actual layout of their real-world McDonald's stores down to the pixel. Which perhaps helps explain this isometric, modular-looking store perspective that inexplicably shows up once or twice in the game and can't really be interacted with. Now, as for what this level editor would have looked like, it appears that only one clue survived the development process. Boot up ECDP and open up manager mode and look at the settings screen, and you'll notice that despite only giving you a handful of options to flip the store's orientation left or right or turn on the fry dispenser, the menu is still called store layout. And not only that, if you look at the design of the store layout button, it appears to show a DS stylus being used to rearrange various pieces of McDonald's kitchen equipment along a grid. It seems like a pretty safe bet that this is indicating what that unfinished map editor would have ended up looking like were it completed. Laval, Quebec. Just a couple days after publishing my video, I received a comment from a YouTube account cryptically named First Last, which read as follows. Do you want something even more rare? What if I told you that McDonald's Canada had a couple of these made that are in French and English and tested in one location in Laval, Quebec. Now, I'd like to think that by this point, I have a pretty good radar for when I'm being messed with. I've lost count of how many kids have left comments on the McDonald's video claiming that they have multiple copies of the ECDP game and they didn't even know it was rare and they're gonna hold on to it forever now. You know, liars. <laughs> but this comment from first last year, it stood out to me. I don't know if it was the specificity of their story or the confidence with which they spoke about it, but for some reason, this comment felt real. So despite my hesitation, I replied and asked for a little bit more info. Fast forward to today. I'm sitting at my desk writing this video, the one you're watching right now, and I remember the Laval Quebec thing, figuring it'd be a cute thing to add to the iceberg. So I search my comments for Laval and nothing comes up. I search for Quebec, no results. I even take a full phrase from the comment, which thank God I screenshotted, tested in one location in Laval, no comments found. It's completely gone. This person, whoever they were, had suddenly deleted their comment. I think the reason I'm haunted by this is because I still don't know why they deleted this comment. I mean, maybe they were bluffing all along and deleted the comment out of fear that they'd been caught lying, or maybe it's actually the opposite. Maybe every word of this comment is true. Perhaps the McDonald's Corporation had actually created an official English and French version of the eCrew development training cartridge and had quietly tested it at a location in Canada before scrubbing every trace of it from existence. Perhaps first last deleted their comment because they realized they might have just revealed a little too much and were spooked by the attention. For now, there's no way of knowing. And that troubles me. And speaking of troubling, I have saved the creepiest thing for last. The alien landscape. And when you think about extracting the textures of the McDonald's E-Crew development program cartridge, you'd probably expect to find some pretty typical stuff, right? Sausage textures, burger boxes, fries in various states of being Frenched. And of course, that's exactly what you get, with one crucial exception. BGNSCR.png. This image, located right there on the cartridge, alongside countless normal textures, appears to depict things not of our world. The image consists of two basic parts. In the top half, a flat, eerie desert terrain with strange, enormous metal cubes jammed unnaturally into the surface. And in the bottom half of the image, a symmetrical metallic room, clearly not human in design, that almost appears to resemble the inside of an alien spaceship. There's no good reason for these images to be on this cartridge. And what's really bizarre is that no matter which of the game's provided color palettes you apply to this image, it never looks right. Regardless of the color scheme you use, it just still ends up looking unmatched and out of place, like it came from somewhere else. Some viewers have even described feeling a strong sense of dread when looking at this image for extended periods of time. So please exercise caution if you're going to download this PNG file. And that's gonna do it. Um, that's the very bottom of the McDonald's iceberg. You now have a full encyclopedic knowledge of everything on this iceberg. Inevitably, there may be more McDonald's stuff in the future. 
Um, but I promise to take a small break and I will not make any more McDonald's content until I'm certain I have something good to share with you. But in the meantime, that's going to do it for me. Um, thank you for watching and have a wonderful rest of your December.